Thank you so much. Good afternoon to you all. It's a great honor for me to be with you. Um, this is a COP of implementation and a COP of many firsts, including addresses, addressing issues related to agriculture and food in a substantive manner and approach linking climate action to food security and agricultural productivity. We are required today to deal with many challenges, including the challenges associated with the agricultural system, food security, and prepare adequate finance for that all. We must close the triple gap of increasing and diversifying yields by 17% to feed 10 billion people in 2030 on the same amount of land available for agriculture today, while reducing on-farm emissions by 21% and make climate resilient, sustainable agriculture the most attractive and widely adopted option for farmers everywhere by 2030. This is our agricultural breakthrough. If this happens, it would be really easier going forward if we are not going to have adequate action will pay the price later, and that is going to be a heavy price. So I'm very pleased with the, with the two initiatives. The one that had been already initiated, AIM, with its many objectives and merits, like very much the emphasis on research and development based on science and scientific evidence, like very much as well that is, this is coming with financial support and assistance. And those two aspects, finance and research and development, are dealing with two, with three, with two of the three challenges that are being put by the French-American Nobel Prize laureate in dealing with climate action and sustainability at large by fighting extreme poverty. She said, in order to achieve our objectives, we need to be dependent more and more on science, and we are trying to do that through innovation. She said that we need to have adequate finance. We have some finance. We don't have adequate finance yet. But she said as well something that was so far missing, at least in the speeches, but not in your action, which is basically endorsing behavioral change. So the work, including this exchange of views around us today, that we need this kind of behavioral change to put agricultural sector in the priority of public and private finance through incentive structure. This behavioral change needs to reach not just the leaders and heads of state, and we listened yesterday to uh, the President of the United States with emphasis on food systems, agriculture, and um, initiatives related to methane, but these kind of uh, changes need to, uh, uh, in behavior, need to reach uh, as well the household sector and, and farmers. So this kind of partnership will be very much required, not just between advanced emerging economies and developing economies, but it needs really to reach the farmers where they are. And that's why, in addition to the aim, we are celebrating the fact that we have this two initiatives coming from Egypt, one which was just mentioned by the Honorable Minister of Agriculture from Egypt, which is FAST, which is basically summarizing lots of complementarity uh, measures and activities to support the work in AIM. This will be very much about cl climate resilient, sustainable agriculture to be supported in different elements here of work that covers the resilience in investments as it should be. The Food and Agriculture for Sustainable Transformation, FAST, was launched already under the auspices of the Egyptian um, um, uh, presidency of the COP. Happy as well, this is the second initiative which got some uh, great traction yesterday, and I'll, I'll stop in, in a few seconds after describing the, its elements. You'll be pleased as agriculture uh, sector and, and food uh, sector leaders that the first of the Sharm el-Sheikh agenda uh, for adaptation uh, that was launched a couple of days ago and announced by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, 
The first item of it is about food security and agricultural systems. It has global ambitions, but it has regional cooperation elements. It has a focus on national priorities, and indeed, it's very much localized at the farm and the household level. It's supported, naturally speaking, by investments in water and nature systems. It requires dealing in a different way with human settlements in rural areas, and it's dealing as well in, in farms close to coastal and ocean areas with infrastructure systems, resilience investment, cross-cutting planning. This is the point raised earlier by the, uh, the Secretary of Agriculture from the United States and as well from the UAE. And indeed, it needs cross-cutting um, finance and investment. This holistic approach to finance, not just climate action, get that where it belongs to the SDGs, sustainable development goals, we endorse in our work as um, Marrakesh partnerships and the work of the champion, the work by AIM, but for AIM to be successful, it needs to aim fast. So I'm very much for the complementarity mentioned by the minister from Egypt and the minister from the UAE that the two initiatives are complementing each other nicely, and for that, aim fast and best of luck. Thank you.